Hey guys, this is Sean in Zhenjiang, China. It's pretty clear outside today, but I really don't want to go out because it's really hot. So instead, I thought I would um, do some work here and uh, also share the gear that I'm going to be using to film far from home. So uh, I'm going to flip the camera around here. All right. So we have here, this is everything. This is, this is all the film equipment that I will be using. And uh, we'll start here with the ICE bag by F-Stop. Um, I'm also using the F-Stop Loca bag, but this is sort of everything. This is the mothership. So we'll start with the camera stuff, I guess. Uh, first off here on the left, actually, this is just a gorilla pod. Um, pretty light. I could bring a tripod, but even a light one is probably about a pound, and this is only a few ounces. So went with this, and plus the Gorilla Pod is is good for handhold. Um, you can sort of uh, put the camera on, and then use the legs as sort of a support, brace it against your body, and of course all the other normal Gorilla Pod stuff, like any position, mount it to anything, do whatever you want. All right, so that is the support, camera support. And here we are. Uh, actually, let me get my iPhone because I'm using the camera to film this. So let's take a look at the camera itself. It's actually the, the GH4 by Panasonic. And uh, okay, going to record. All right, we're rolling. So here we are. This is the GH4, you can see it right, if it'll focus, thank you iPhone. So yeah, this is the this is the GH4 by Panasonic. This is a pretty new camera. It does 4K at 100 megabits per second. Uh, here we just have the, the microphone, which I'm recording into right now. And the lens here is the 12 to 35 mil at f2.8. I don't know if it says that anywhere on here. Yeah, not really sure. But that is the camera. And one of the things that I love about the GH4 and the GH3 before it is the spectacular battery life. One of these is only a few ounces, but it will last you four or five uh, hours nonstop. So for, for shooting, a shooting day, it'll usually lasts me the entire day, sometimes even two days, depending on, on how much I'm filming. Now the, the GH4 is basically the size, uh, about the size of a uh, DSLR, but one of the big advantages over a DSLR for me is of course the battery life. Uh, you're, you're not gonna get that with a DSLR doing video. Uh, the big thing is uh, the electronic viewfinder. Let me toggle it here if I can. Uh, you know, it does that in video. So that's something that the Canon DSLRs will not do. If you want to use a Canon DSLR in outside, if you want to use that outside, you need one of the clip-on uh, attachments, which basically just becomes like a it's an attachment for the LCD. It's, it's kind of big. It's not heavy, but it's big. It's bulky. It takes up room and it makes the camera bigger. And if you want something that's relatively small, stealthy, Micro Four Thirds, uh, and particularly the GH4, is, is a really good option for that. Okay, so that is the camera, and I'm just gonna switch here now that we're back. Uh, let's go ahead and, here's the battery stuff. So like I said, each battery is probably good for four or five hours nonstop. This is the charger here. And here we have uh, an adapter so we can plug this into any car for hitchhiking or something and, you know, normal, normal plug there. And then I have four batteries in here, um, four of these, so a total of five. So altogether, that should last me, if I'm off the grid, maybe three or four days of shooting. And that's the powering option. Now here we have the Think Tank, a Pixel Pocket Rocket. Let's get focus here. 
Yeah, the SD Pixel Pocket Rocket. Uh, now I use this for all the SD cards. You'll see I have a ridiculous amount of storage available. But this also doubles as my money holder. Now this is, uh, to some people this is, comes off as a little bit risky. You have both your money and your, and all of your data in one place. Um, ideally it would be separate, but for the sake of space saving and just making sure that I always have this, you know, if I just have one thing, it's a lot harder for me to forget because it's, uh, it has everything I need. It's essential to living must have. So yeah, that is the Pixel Pocket Rocket. Have just a standard lens pen here. Uh, nothing crazy. It's got the little fun mustache brush. Ooh. And let's see what else do we have here. Here we just have some standard filters. Uh, they're 58 millimeter and I have two uh, ND 0.9x I think and uh, one circular polarizer. So all of that fits in here, nice and compact. Now lenses, optics. So I already showed you the, uh, the 12 to 35. Um, here, this is not a Canon lens. Do not let the lens cap deceive you. This is actually the Panasonic 20 mil F 1.7. So this is like a pancake lens. Really small, really compact, and light, of course. Here we have the Olympus 45mm f1.8. Again, really small, lightweight, and this one can actually get some pretty shallow depth of field, so it's good for that. Uh, now, while I'm on the topic of depth of field, that is one of the downsides to micro four thirds system versus, say, uh, you know, full frame Canon or even APS, uh, APS-C is it um, the sensor is smaller so the optics the optics are smaller and therefore it's uh it's less shallow depth of field it's less selective um, in some ways this is a good thing uh, for someone who's trying to follow the action it's really kind of terrible to have to deal with changing focus every two seconds but Sometimes you want that. The 45 millimeter will do it. Uh, Canon also has the 25, I think it's 25 1.4, which is still relatively compact. A lot of people opt for that. In the future, what I'd like to do is get a speed booster by Metabones. And that'll let me take like, if I have like a, let's just imagine this one's a Canon lens. It'll let me pop a Canon or Nikon lens on there and it will reduce it to the sensor size on the Micro Four Thirds. Uh, one of the bonuses of this is not only is it optically similar to full frame, just a slightly more limited field of view, but it also increases the light by I think one stop or half a stop. Okay, so let's talk about the glorious world of audio. That is actually my big passion. I used to be an audio guy, so it was really difficult compromising here and, and getting stuff that normally on a professional shoot I wouldn't want to use but still um, it's it's lighter anyway and it's cheaper so we'll start with the shotgun microphone this is a Rode video mic it's actually the updated version with the Rycote liar suspension system which is incredibly incredibly flexible it's kind of ridiculous actually I, I think I could like just into a, a tug of war fight with a dog and it would still survive. Well, anyway, this is, um, it has a nine volt battery, which it would be better if it was double A, but we can live with nine volt. And that connects via 3.5 eighth inch jack. So it's not a, oh, come on, where, wow, geez, Sean. It's not a balanced connection. You don't wanna run it too far. And so speaking of that, here we have the Altoids. I'll get into that momentarily. You know, you never want your breath to stink while you travel. Um, and I just have a basic extension cable here. I think it's half a meter. I don't know, not sure, but there it is. And also headphones, earphones. Yeah, okay, audio guys, people who are into audio, I'm sorry, don't judge me too harshly. This is not 
ideal, but this is light. It's small. It doesn't take up room. And for some reason, these cheap five, ten dollar ones, they last a whole lot longer than those thirty dollar ones from Samsung and Apple. Not sure why that's the case, but that's what I'm using to monitor the audio. Okay, so here we have the oh, what's this? This is the Sony M10 by Sony. Uh, this takes micro SDHC or M2. I have no idea who uses that. Uh, it's an omnidirectional onboard mic. Uh, primarily, though, I'm using it for labs. Uh, the battery life is ridiculous. It takes two double A's and it lasts for ever. Like, I'm not joking. It will last until man is extinct and no one is on this planet anymore. And then we have the Zoom H1. A lot of people know Zoom for the H4. This is a small version without XLR or anything. The mics, uh, if I take the wind cover off, the microphones are in a standard XY stereo configuration. This is pretty standard for Zoom, uh, Zoom recorders, and it's pretty decent. So I would be able to use this for ambience, and that's kind of my plan. But both of these, both the Sony M10 and the Zoom H1, what they're primarily for is, you can open the Altoids to get a nice mint, is actually labs, labs, lavaliers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, this is, I have two of these, one of them I'm wearing obviously so you can hear me, um, but both of them will fit in this Altoids can. And I have some gaff tape in there. Um, there's a, the, one of the lapel clips, and somewhere in there, there's a vampire clip. I think it's right there in the corner. Yeah, you see it there. Now, these labs are by Oscar Tech, and the beautiful thing is they are, as far as I can tell, almost identical to Tram TR50s, which have been a staple, a workhorse of the film industry for, well, longer than I've been alive. So... It's a really good option, and each one is only $100. I can't remember the model name. I'll, I'll post it here in the video once I check on that. So basically, I just take one of the labs, connect it to one of the recorders, the Zoom or the M10, and secure it with a rubber band. So basically make sure that the mini jack isn't going to pop out or move around, and it's good to go. Ideally, I would use a wireless system like a Sennheiser or Electrosonics, but it's heavy. This is light. You know, with a wireless, the, the receivers and transmitters are built to last. They're not made out of shoddy plastic like this. And for durability, maybe that's good, but plastic, honestly, for me has worked. And the weight savings are tremendous. Instead of having two devices, transmitter and receiver per channel, I just need the one recorder. So again, that decreases the weight penalty. It's just you can't monitor. If you want to, you, you basically find yourself grabbing the zoom every so often from the talent, checking some, some of the audio recording, making sure there aren't any problems. It's a little bit more of a hassle, but again, weight. And for some people, cost is going to be a big factor in this. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, here's just uh, some gaff tape rolled around a pencil. Uh, so dual purpose, if you need to tape something up or if you need to jot down some notes, uh, you'll have to find your own knife. But nonetheless, it's a classy way to keep yourself prepared. Oh, and also I have this Sanyo Eneloop USB AA charger, very, very handy can connect it to my laptop or any USB port and charge. And I think for one of these, it's usually from zero to 100. It takes about four hours, maybe. Not entirely sure on that, but very handy, very light, very small. Okay, so finally we can talk about the computer stuff. Let me, there we go. So this is a MacBook Air 11 inch. This is the newest model power right here relatively small compact good don't bother bringing the big extension cord uh, it's 
not worth it. And honestly, actually, you don't need the extension cord because this connection right here is just a standard barrel connector. So if you need an extension cable for it, don't bring the super thick Apple provided one. Just get just get a regular barrel connection, uh, barreled, barreled connector extension. So laptop power. The MacBook Air 11 inch does not have a built in SD card reader. So I needed to get one of these. It's just a USB three SDHC reader. You can get USB two ones. They're a little bit smaller and lighter, but for me, it was important to transfer as quickly as possible. So I don't, you know, deplete the battery on the MacBook. That was more important to me than the space and weight savings. All right, and finally, ladies and gentlemen, we have the backup stuff. So each one of these is two terabytes. In total, I have four terabytes of data here. My plan is to first fill up all the SD cards that I had in the Pixel Pocket Rocket wallet. And then once they're full, I'll probably end up doing like a A to B mirror of these, of these two drives. But uh, at most, this production can probably handle about three terabytes of data, which should be plenty for three days. So uh, I hope you enjoyed. Read the article for more. Let me know if you have any suggestions or tips of your own. And uh, thanks for watching.